Cyberine. Welcome to the topic of cyberbullying, where it presents a dangerous threat to the digital world. To give you an overview, the contents of this presentation may include the following. Introduction of cyberbullying, how to identify the cyberbullying, the effects of cyberbullying, examples of cyberbullying, respond to cyberbullying, and lastly, the final slides with the team members' identification, references, and our contact information. Before we start with the discussion, I would like to give out a saying that blowing out someone else's candle doesn't make yours shine any brighter. And this is a humble quote from Gag of Life, and that is why we all must remember from our hearts. What is cyberbullying? This is one of the most frequent questions we are asked because a lot of us know what it is when it happens, but have trouble wrapping concise descriptive words around it. Formally, according to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, cyberbullying was first used in 1998. They define it as the electronic posting of mean-spirited messages about the person or such as a student, often done anonymously. However, as the time has gone on and the internet itself has evolved, so has the definition of cyberbullying. It is important to remember that one instance of mistreatment cannot accurately be equated to bullying, as it must involve harmful behavior of a repetitive nature or action. Even though many people call one instance of harassment on the playground in the term of bullying, that really isn't an accurate characterization. Let's start off with the first one which is anonymity. While victims usually know who their bully is, online bullies may be able to hide their identities online. This means that no personally identifying information can be collected in an anonymous study. Usually, the anonymity of the internet can lead to crueler or harsher abuses from the bully. All while, the victim has no means of discovering who his or her harasser is. Number 2. Relentless On here, bullying typically ends once the victim is removed from the negative social situation. However, smartphones, laptops, and other devices have made it possible for people to communicate with each other at all hours and from nearly any location. Cyber police may be able to torment their victim 24 hours per day or even 7 days per week, making it difficult for the victim to escape it by going home or even changing schools. Number 3. Public With traditional bullying, often only people that interact with those involved will know of the abuse. However, when content is posted or shared online, it's possible that anyone may see it. This opens up the victim to more potential ridicule or pain from strangers. This is compounded by the anonymity afforded by virtual spaces, while bullying in person may be done covertly or out of view to avoid punishment. Cyberbullies need not fear being witnessed in the act if their identities are not known. Number 4. Permanent Because online content is impossible to delete entirely, cyberbullying may damage the victims or possibly the bullies' reputation permanently. Even if the content is removed or deleted from the original site, someone may find it posted elsewhere later. Easy to overlook Cyberbullying may be harder for teachers, administrators, and parents to discover because they may not have access to students' online activities. They may not be able to overhear or see the abuse taking place. Unless someone comes forward, parents and teachers may never know that bullying is already taking place. 
compared to traditional bullying, the effects of cyberbullying are often more significant. Not only do the hurtful messages reach an unlimited audience, but the words and images are often preserved online. Cyberbullying is not a typical harassment through online because this has a different types. And the first one is the exclusion. Exclusion is the act of leaving someone out deliberately. Exclusion exists within person bullying situations but is also used online to target and bully a victim. For example, your child might be excluded or uninvited to groups or parties while they see other friends being included or left out of message threads or conversations that involve mutual friends. The second type of cyberbullying is frapping. Frapping is a mix of social engineering and hacking. It involves gaining access to a victim's social media account and then posting things in order to embarrass the person or otherwise ruin their reputation. For younger bullies, this may involve something as benign as getting on someone's Snapchat account and telling all of the person's friends that they cheated on a test. For older bullies, it could be as bad as accessing someone's Twitter account and posting inappropriate content in an effort to get the victim fired. For example, a bully posting racial or homophobic slurs through someone else's profile to ruin their reputation. The next one is catfishing. What is catfishing? At its simplest, someone creates a fake profile to befriend another person, in this case, your child. Through communicating, they can acquire personal information about your child or family and use it against them. Sometimes it is used to tease or humiliate the young person. In other cases, it can prove more serious such as identity theft. We also have the trolling. Trolling is probably one of the most common forms of online harassment. It happens on social media platforms constantly across the web. Trolling involves insulting someone or making any inflammatory claims about them, true or not, simply to get some kind of emotional response from the victim. These attacks are usually posted on the victim's social media page and meant to instigate anger so that the victim actually embarrasses themselves or behaves inappropriately. The next type of cyberbullying that we have is claiming. This type of online bullying constitutes of posting about or directly sending insults and profanity to their target. Claiming is similar to trolling but will usually be a more direct attack on a victim to incite them into online fights. Another type is the swatting. Swatting is when someone calls emergency responders with claims of dangerous events taking place at an address. People swat others with the intention of causing panic and fear when armed response units arrive at their home or place of work. Swatting is more prevalent within the online gaming community. Corporate attacks can affect public confidence, damaging business reputation, and in some instances, force them to collapse. Second, trickery. Trickery is similar to outing, with an added element of deception. In this situation, the bully will befriend their target and lure them into a false sense of security. Once the bully has gained their target trust, they abuse that trust and shares the victim's secret and private information to a third party or multiple third parties. Third, impersonating someone. This is another common technique and it's easy to do with the help of free and unverified email accounts offered by Gmail, Hotmails, and others. Bullies create a name similar to the victims and then go online and act in an awful way while pretending to be the victim. Other attacks that fall into this category are stealing the victim's password, pretending to be the victim while chatting with others, changing the victim's profile in, in social accounts so that is offensive in setting up social account in the victim's name. Fourth, masquerading. Masquerading happens when a bully creates a made-up profile or identity online with the sole purpose of cyberbullying someone. This could involve creating a fake email account, fake social media profile, and selecting a new identity and photos to fool the victim. In these cases, the bullies tend to be summoned the victim's known sweet well. Fifth, harassment. Harassment is a broad category under which many types of cyberbullying fall into. 
but in generally refers to a sustained and constant pattern of hurtful or threatening online messages sent with the intention of doing harm to someone. Posting rumors about someone on social media network or blog is also a common attack. Sometimes, the bully gets creative like using the warn feature on the victim's social networks to get that person investigated or banned, posting the victim's personal information on the internet, putting the victim in danger of identity theft or the action of other predators, and using malware or other applications in order to spy on the victim and take control of the victim's computer. Sites of cyberbullying First, uneasy, nervousness, or scared about going to school or outside. This is a major warning sign that a child is uncomfortable in their school environment or being around their classmate. Some other signs to look out for are if a child continuously asks if they can skip school by staying home or if they may cause asking to come home early during the school days. Second, they become more secretive about their technology use. That might look like leaving the room to use their phone, exiting out of tabs when you walk by or avoiding conversation about what they are doing on the computer. According to a Marvel University blog, they unexpectedly shut off devices when others approach, refuse to discuss what they do online, or get upset or agitated when you try to discuss with them, they may be attempting to hide the fact that they are being bullied. Third, trouble sleeping at night or sleepy during the day. Restlessness is a huge factor when it comes to cyberbullying. Children are unable to sleep because they are tormented by what the cyberbullies are saying about them. This fatigue can then affect the child throughout the rest of the day, making their school days even harder as they attempt to deal with schoolers and classmates. Fourth, loss of interest in favorite hobbies or activities. If a child has suddenly lost interest in their favorite sport or hobby, it may be an indicator of cyberbullying. They may be trying to distance themselves from others making fun of them or attempting to fit in. There are a lot of effects that we can see into a person who experienced cyberbullying in today's world, which has been made smaller by technology. New age problems have been born. To put it simply, cyberbullying refers to the misuse of information by a technology with the intention to harass others. Cyberbullying comes in various forms. Cyberbullying literature suggests that victims generally manifest effects psychological problems such as depression, anxiety, loneliness, low self-esteem, social exclusion, school phobias, and poor academic performance. Studies have shown that daily school age cyberbullying manifested in physical psychomatic symptoms such as headaches, abdominal pain, sleeplessness, behavioral difficulties including alcohol consumption, self-harm, and revenge may include also. One of the most serious and dangerous symptoms of chronic depression include suicidal tendencies like suicidal thoughts, suicide plan, or even attempts. Sadly, depression associated with cyberbullying has led too many young people to end their lives to escape the abuse. Good day! I'm Diane Remo and I will be discussing the examples of effects on cyberbullying in a person's emotional, mental, and physical health. In order to understand the examples, let's relate it into a situation where I will be telling you a short story about Anna a victim of cyberbullying. Meet Anna, she's the only child. She's totally sweet, kind, and smart girl. Currently at her 10th grade, yet at the young age, she became an introvert. Because of her parents' lack of time with her, she didn't even experience having a family bonding due to her parents and any work on their family business. One day, one of her classmates caught Anna vomiting inside the restroom's chemical because she doesn't feel well. That girl who saw Anna that day went out the restroom quickly and told her classmates that Anna is pregnant. That issue spreads on social media, and as Anna just get home, she pick up her phone and use Facebook. She got curious because it is the first time that her notification keep on beeping and the number are keep increasing. She decided to check it out and click one notification, which became her worst nightmare. As harsh words and judgment all over the comment section saying, 
Pakitang tao ka lang. Ew, grass girl. Buti na to, gumbaw ka pala. Pala yung innocent. Ew. Pregnant pala siya. Legit. After that tragedy, Anna refused to go to school. She feel that when people took her voice out, she doesn't even give a chance to express her side. And her self-esteem completely vanished. without knowing her side and the real story will only trigger her anxiety and fear in trusting others. The next one is the isolation. In connected to Anna's story again, the effect of the judgment and harsh words from her classmates will tend her to isolate herself without letting her family, teachers, and other people know about what she's going through. On the other hand, it will also affect Anna's mental health. First is the academic issue. Due to the incident, Anna will stop going to school to avoid her classmate. She will also tend to do cutting classes so her parents won't notice. As a result, she will have an academic issue such as failing grade and even her ranking in school will be discarded as she failed to attend her class. The next one is the depression and anxiety. The freedom of expressing Anna's side was hindered by her fear. She isolated herself and never told her parents or teachers about the issue. This leads for her to develop depression and anxiety which leads her to thought about ending her life. The last effect of bullying to Anna will be her physical health. She will experience the self-harm. After developing anxiety and depression, she will tend to feel tired about what her classmates' judgment about her. Anna will be out of her mind since no one is there to give her an advice or comfort her. This will lead into self-harm such as cutting her wrists, pulling hair strands, punching or slapping herself until she got bruises. Good day, my name is Angela Di Marcello and now I will be going to discuss on what can you do to help in preventing the cyberbullying. So first, make the most of privacy settings. On Facebook and other social networking sites, you can adjust your settings so that only the people you select are able to see your personal information and post. It is important to check the privacy settings frequently because sites sometimes change their policies. For the second one, we have the think before you post. If you wouldn't say anything in a room full of strangers, don't say it via internet. Even letting someone know sensitive or embarrassing information about you via email can have unforeseen consequences. For the last topic, which is to keep personal information personal. Passwords exist for a reason. Sharing them with friends is like passing out copies of your house key to friends and strangers alike. If anyone besides you knows your passwords, it should be your parents and your parents only. This law is implemented by penalizing acts of cyberbullying. People are encouraged to become responsible netizens and make them accountable for their cyber actions. Child Protection Policy of DepEd With this declaration, DepEd shall promulgate a zero-tolerance policy for any act of child abuse, exploitation, violence, discrimination, bullying, and other forms of abuse. DepEd also adopted Child Protection Policy to provide special protection who are gravely threatened or endangered by circumstances, which may of course affect their normal development and over which they have no control, and as well as to assist the concerned agencies in the rehabilitation. Teach children and young people to follow the following steps to 